Hello, I'm Steve McFell and I work here at the National Oceanography Centre Southampton. Uh, this is the hangar which I work in with my colleagues uh, developing autonomous underwater vehicles. Um, autonomous underwater vehicles, or AUVs as they are known, are used by scientists throughout the world in reaching parts of the ocean which they couldn't otherwise reach. There are three types of AUVs which we've developed here in Southampton and this is Autosub 3. Autosub 3 is uh, just over 7 metres long and weighs 3,600 kilograms. Um, it tends to be used for a rather specialised purpose of under ice work for underneath sea ice or underneath uh, ice shelves in the Arctic or the Antarctic. So I'll give you a tour of Autosub 3. Um, this is the nose section and if we look at this uh, black object here, this is actually the, the ears and the sound source for the communication systems on Autosub 3. So through this black boot, we call it here, we send messages to the AUV and receive messages back from it. We have this device, a transmissometer, that measures how murky the water is, how clear it is. It actually can be quite murky underneath an ice shelf. Um, a precision sensor for measuring the um, salinity and temperature of the seawater. Uh, we also have a, a, a satellite beacon. If the AUV comes back to the surface, we want to be able to relocate it. And this device, which we actually call the Jacuma Box, fires out a line when we want to recover the AUV back onto the ship and it pops up a float with a line on it. This is the uh, centre section of the AUV, it's two metres long and it actually consists of seven pressure vessels uh, arranged like a uh, gun barrel if you like, or a revolver I should say. Uh, these are carbon fibre pressure vessels. Uh, four of those pressure vessels contain the batteries, which uh, we have one of the battery packs here. They are actually just normal D cells which you might use in a large torch. Um, and there are actually 5,000 uh, D cells in the, the AUV. And three of the tubes actually hold the electronics for the various uh, scientific sensors and control systems on the AUV. This is the uh, tail section of the AUV. And uh, like the nose section, it's crammed full of scientific instruments and also parts of the control system for the AUV. For example, um, here we see a, a sensor which actually measures the distance uh, from the AUV to the ice above so the AUV can control its, its height so it doesn't crash into the ice. Um, this device is called a, a multi-beam sonar and use, it produces 112 beams of sound and using that we can build up a swath image of the shape of the underside of the ice shelf which is above the um, AUV. Uh, this is a, another device for locating the AUV, it's, a, it's called a transponder. With this we can find out where the AUV is underwater. And moving on to the, the rear of the AUV, we have the propulsion system and the, and the control planes. Uh, it's an interesting fact that the propulsion system is only 350 watts, which is actually less than a small vacuum cleaner, for example. Uh, that propels the AUV forward at a speed of about 5 kilometres an hour. So Autosub 3 is quite an amazing AUV actually. It's, it's done things that no other AUV in the world has done. Uh, for example, it's, it's been underneath the Pine Island Glacier ice shelf in the Antarctic. Uh, not once, not twice, but a total of uh, 12 times. And that was a pretty exciting uh, mission to be involved in. Uh, the AUV actually, when, when it goes underneath the ice shelf, is away for a period of 36 hours and for 34 of those hours, we have no contact with it whatsoever. So we launch the AUV, it's, it waits for our command to say, okay, you can go and go off on this mission underneath the ice shelf. Off it goes, two hours later, we get no signals from it whatsoever. And a day and a half later, you can imagine us all waiting to hear the sonar ping to find out if it's returned. And, um, you know, luckily, 12 times it, it has. It's gone out 12 times and it's returned 12 times. But it, it is quite a stressful um, thing to go through to, to wait for that sonar ping to say it's returned back home again.